Hi, this is Rubat Khan and welcome to Intro to Algorithms. Today is lecture one and in this lecture we are going to look at what an algorithm is and we are going to look at some part of analysis of algorithms. So let's get started. What is an algorithm? The formal definition of an algorithm is it is a finite set of steps or statements that produces an optimal solution in a finite time interval. So there are three parts of this definition. First, it must contain some specific number of steps. Second, must produce an optimal solution. Now what is an optimal solution? An optimal solution is not just a current solution, but a very feasible solution in a given situation. Now, what does this mean? Let's say we are given some numbers to sort. Let's say I have 5, 1, and 3. One possible solution to sort these numbers is to find out or list out all the possible arrangements or permutations. which are 513, 531, 351, 315, 135, and 153. So after listing out all the possible permutation, I select the correct answer. Now the question is, is this an optimal solution. Now, if we apply the same approach for 300 or 3000 numbers, just imagine the time it will take. Three numbers, it took me three factorial amount of time. Therefore, 3000 numbers and listing out all the possible permutations of these numbers would take me. 3000 factorial. Now, is this a feasible solution? The answer is no. Although it will give me the correct output, but it's not feasible. Therefore, we do not call this an algorithm. Third, an algorithm must have or must produce the correct output in a finite time interval. That is, it, 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 it should not run forever. So when we have these set of this specific set of steps that produces the correct output and a feasible output given a situation in some finite time interval, we call that an algorithm. So in future we are going to look at some sorting algorithms which do not try out or which do not list all the possible permutations, rather use smart approach to produce the correct output. Now what is analysis of algorithms? Analysis of algorithms is the study of choosing the appropriate algorithm given a situation. In terms of time taken, which is refer referred to as time complexity and space consumed, referred to as space complexity. In simple words, analysis of algorithms answers the question. Which algorithm will perform best on a given situation or on a given scenario and why? So in order to answer these two questions, which algorithm and why, we study 
how much time an algorithm takes to produce the output and how much space an algorithm consumes. For example, we already know of linear and binary search, and these two algorithms perform the same task, and that is, to assert, that is searching for a particular element. But why do we have two searching algorithms to perform the same task? Now, so now, given situation, if the array given to us is sorted, then we would definitely use binary search because it would perform faster. And if the given situation where the array is unsorted, we would use linear search. Now, how did we answer this? How do we know that binary search performs better when the array is sorted? How do we know linear search performs better when the array is unsorted? All these questions will be answered through analysis of algorithms. So what is time complexity? We have already mentioned that the running time of an algorithm is also known as time complexity. One thing to note over here is the running time of an algorithm is measured as a function of input size, not time. The answer is, let's say, now why do we measure time complexity as a function of input size, not time? The answer is, let's say we have two algorithms, A1 and A2. that solves the same problem and somehow we know that A2 performs better or a smarter algorithm than A1. Now let's say we have two computers. We have a regular computer that we use in our homes, a PC, and we have a supercomputer. Now let us apply A2 in our PC and let us apply A1 in our supercomputer to solve some same problem. Now, if we measure in terms of time, units of time, Definitely, this will take lesser time because supercomputers are faster than our regular personal computers. Now, we want to compare between two algorithms independent of machine. We want to compare two algorithms or two algorithms based on the input size. For, by that we mean for large amount of input, let's say for some 1 million data, which algorithm will perform better? And that is why we do not use units of time. Rather, we express the time taken by an algorithm using an equation which is in terms of n, and n is nothing but input size. Now, how to find the time complexity? Now, it is not always possible to find the exact running time. Moreover, it's not necessary. For example, you travel to work, which is 70 kilometers away. Now, if I ask you how long does it take, would you say it takes me 30 minutes, 34 seconds, and 5 milliseconds? Now, is it convenient to be that precise and do the seconds and the milliseconds portion a big concern? The answer is no. 
Now, naturally, if you're ask this question how long it takes you to reach to work what you do is you'd answer you'd make some approximation you'd say you take about 30 minutes or maybe 31 minutes so you make an approximation very much close to the precise time now while finding out the time complexity of algorithms we do the exact same thing it is difficult and quite insignificant to find the precise equation. Okay, remember, we already we've already seen that time complexity of an algorithm is expressed in some form of an equation. Now, to achieve or to get that equation very precise is very difficult and sometimes impossible, and most importantly, insignificant. We will see this later how it's insignificant and like this example like real life scenario we also approximate the time complexity of algorithms now let us get familiar with something called order of growth or rate of growth now we know that if you plot a graph where the x-axis is input and the y-axis is time, it is quite obvious that as input increases or the input size increases, the time taken will also increase. Now the pattern, how the time grows with the increase of input size is known as order of growth. So let's say some algorithm might grow, or the, the time complexity of some algorithm might grow in a linear way. Some might grow in a polynomial way. So this behavior or this pattern is known as order or rate of growth. Now we will see that the time complexity of an algorithm or the approximated time complexity of an algorithm is expressed or will be expressed as some order of growth. And some common rate of growth we will come across are n polynomial, exponential, and logarithmic. So that is all for today's lecture. Thank you very much.